Multi-layered basically means usually you have a planarizing layer underneath and something that's called a hard mask on top of that. And on top of that, you do your standard photoresist type process. The industry was at a point where they couldn't continue making the feature sizes smaller and smaller. Basically, we're down to where we have almost no depth of focus within the structures we were trying to print on a topography substrate. So it became necessary to move from using a photoresist and an anti-reflective coating to now a multi-layer stack. What happens with the planarizing bottom layer is you really improve your depth of focus. And now you get a flat film to do your exposures on. And on that, you build a hard mask, and you can actually then use a very thin photoresist, which improves your resolution quite dramatically. So by moving to a multi-layer setup, where you have a silicon-containing hard mask on top of a high carbon content SOC layer underneath, you could rely on etching just into the hard mask, and that's all the resistance would have to do. And that structure gave you enough resistance to withstand the etching process for transferring the pattern into the substrate. A couple of the challenges are stack compatibility. That is one of the critical parameters of multi-layer lithography. It is just not one layer where you have bar. You have several layers. So each layer has to be compatible with the underneath layer. So we test our materials to make sure that it is compatible with a customer substrate. For most of our competition, they design a product to meet a customer-specific need. And, and that's well and good, but that takes time. We designed our product so that we can mix ratios of different materials so we can actually have a high production process and tune it to their specific optical needs. We have an extremely stable chemistry for our hard mass systems that I think is a real advantage for customers. We have a full portfolio of materials so we can match that spin on carbon or that underlayer to your needs. We have some customers that really want four, 500 degree C compatibility with these. They have to withstand those temperatures. That means your material cannot disintegrate or decompose. That's really pretty new and very difficult to achieve. We have materials out there to do that. We use industry standard simulation software, but we also created our own software packages to do simulations. So one thing that we've, we've looked at for many years and published on is what we call foot exposure. So how the light behaves at the bottom of the resist at the interface with the hard mask. We want to make sure that there's enough light down there for patterning to make a clean profile, but not too much where we lose adhesion or have an undercut problem. Regardless of whether you use EUV, electron beam, directed self-assembly, you still need a multi-layer structure beneath the imaging layer to transfer the pattern into the substrate. So I think it's going to be with us for a long time. When we first started going to talk about multi-layer in front of customers, and we'd show the successes and what it could do, they said, that's a really neat technology. We really like that. But there's no way in heck we're ever going to use it because it's going to be too costly. So after a few years of perseverance, now it's industry standard. Brewer Science is recognized in this industry. For its tenacity, it's perseverance. We know what we're doing, we understand the optics, and we apply those and we teach our customers what we've learned works best. We have to push hard to be innovators because people don't want to change. They want everything to be like it was before, but better. But sometimes better can't happen unless you change something. You have to just keep persevering, pushing, that the change is okay and safe, and it will actually help you and make, make you more successful.